In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David and Alyssa Ortiz get together to talk about all the different renditions of Kakariko Village. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. My name is David, and today I am here with Alyssa Ortiz. Alyssa, how are you? I am great. How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be doing this again. I know, it's exciting. So we had, um, pre-global pandemic, we had a couple ideas of episodes that you and I were going to be getting together to do. Yep. And... Um, um, obviously, we had to put the show kind of on hold. We, we, it was, these last couple months have been been rough Emo- emotionally for me even because I, I mean i want to make more content it was really mm-hmm. challenging we found yes. out a couple creative ways to have people uh mallory and ryan who are a married couple in michigan they recorded an episode for us they're going to actually do an episode again they're going to do another episode for us which will come out just after this one nice. um and uh, it was just i just really missed it oh i used to we we, we used to record three of these a month and it, now mm-hmm. it was like one a month yeah um, so we, the, season three will be a shorter season by the way full disclosure i think we'll only have 18 episodes okay um boy these cicadas are like just blowing up they are coming through the glass it's that time of day where they want to be heard and they want to be loud <laughs> they want to procreate here. yeah i mean they only make that sound when they're procreating or they're dying so Wow, that's morbid. It is a bit morbid. They're like, I've been resting in this dirt for seven years. I'm ready to do something. Do something and then just go back to So we're in my we're in my living room up here is where we're recording this episode. It's the same episode that Dan and I met in when we did our listener feedback episode a few yes. episodes ago. And honestly, I'm a little bummed because we had all the windows open. There was a nice breeze. But then we I, I chose to close them just to 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 quell, to quench, to quell this uh cicada. Um, celebration that's happening outside right now. Yeah, it's just that time of year. It's uh, when I have the most heart attack time trying to walk down the street. (laughs) I try. Because you have a bug thing. Yeah, phobia of all creepy crawlies. (laughs) So I literally, I go to my best friend's house. It's like two blocks away. Yes. And I'll call my roommate like, hey, can you meet me halfway when I'm walking home? Because I'll be holding my ears the entire time walking because they just, oh. Cicada Central, all loud. We're going to be talking about Kakariko Village today, but I'll get to that in just a second. Um, and if there's a if there's a bug that is full throttle bug phobia, I think it's a cicada. Those things are like the size of small mice. They're huge and loud, and they don't care where they land. So that's terrifying. They don't. Care where they, land. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness. Well, we are back in the saddle here. Yes. And uh, I couldn't be happier. Um, let's just get into it. We are going to be talking about Kakariko Village yes. or the Kakariko Villages today. Yes. I do have some listener feedback I want to get to first. Perfect. And I'm just so happy to be doing this again, Alyssa. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> of course. And then uh, a little bit behind the curtain, right after we record this, this episode, we're, we're going to record episode mm-hmm. 10, where we're going to be talking about, what is it? Oh, top 10 most bothersome enemies. The bothersome enemies. That'll come out in two episodes. So now I'm going to put that Ryan and Mallory episode in between just for some variety. Perfect. But I can't wait for that too. So Kakariko Village. Uh, mm-hmm. Very exciting, but let me again. Like I just said, I'm I'm all over the place here. Let me uh, do some <laughs> listener feedback. So we, we have I have a couple here today. Not too many. I didn't want to go nuts, even though we've been getting a ton of feedback mm-hmm. during this kind of time of hibernation a little bit. Right. Um, I, I think a a I think a hey listen volume three is inevitable for this season towards the end. Yes, and maybe we even do it as a group thing or something. I think that'd be kind of fun. Once That'd we be can, fun, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Really get together with some people. and uh, But until then, uh, here's one for at iTunes. We got an iTunes review by Zelda for Life 08. Zelda number four, Life 08. Uh, back in June, Zelda for Life 08 said, Season three, five stars. All That's the title of the review is season oh. three. And the review just says, Thank you for keeping the podcast going through this tough time. Uh, grateful hands, grateful hands, grateful hands. Thank you, Zelda, for Life 08. I was actually really happy to see that because it has been challenging. Yes. And I haven't wanted to... Um, a lot of shows that I know right now have switched their formats into like these kind of Zoom episodes and these Skype episodes and yeah. stuff like that. And I think that, that for some shows, that's the right choice. Yeah. Um, I think that works for us. For the... Just... You know, this whole this whole show, another Zelda podcast, for me as a producer of the show, Alyssa, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I've ever specifically told you this, mm-hmm. for me, the point 
is people sitting in a room together talking about like the nerdy Zelda stuff. It's not, it, you know, once you start doing Zoom episodes, you lose a little bit of that, like we're just hanging out feel. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Sitting in the room with a person one on one or with a group is, is completely different than these Zoom meetings. I agree. You know, maybe if it's like a rev- if you're doing a podcast where you're reviewing video games or reviewing movies, maybe, you know, each person can have their piece and have their say. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm just so happy to be back. And so thank you, Zelda for Life 08, to, to kind of recognize that as well. Mm-hmm. We have been working hard. And it has been it has been stressful because we've been wanting to put content out uh, over on YouTube for the a silent protagonist episode, which was episode two or episode 23 of season two. Mm-hmm. Timothy Ash left us a quick comment and he said, does anyone remember? Oh, so a silent protagonist. This is an episode that I did with actually the uh, the, the one of the hosts of another six five show, six five media show. The studio demands it, yes. which is a show that I produce. But um, TC DeWitt and Jim Brzezelic. Uh, create the show over in California. Mm-hmm. TC joined me on a silent protagonist to talk a little bit about um, the importance of having Link not talk and having him be oh, an, an right. emotional avatar for the yes. player. Anyway, Timothy Ash here does point out, he says, does anyone remember Link actually says w- the words, come on, in Wind Waker? Can't remember exactly where, oh, yeah. but I was so happy to hear him say words. He also meowed in the game. Love the podcast. New subscriber. Thank you so much, Timothy Ash. Um, I think that come on might be when he's calling the statues or maybe when he's like con- con- half controlling medley and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. I think there's parts when, um, when yeah, he's calling someone. I, from mm-hmm. I'm t- kind of remembering on, he does his little his cute it. little voice of come on and it's yeah i think it's also those statues that he's supposed to control it might be i believe that's what it was Remember he puts his little wand to his hand and then like or his oh. head and does the, <laughs> the spooky booky yes uh, motions <laughs> come on anyway yes you're absolutely right technically link does he i think he technically says a few words here and there once in a while and usually it's mm-hmm. like almost exclamations yes. come on Hey. Um, my favorite exclamation ever is Link landing from a high place in Ocarina of Time specifically when it sounds like he's like questioning his life choices. Because when he lands, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. It sounds like he just absolutely broke some bone somewhere. And he's just and he's like, thinking about it. oh, boy, I, I felt that basically. It's like, <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you got to push forward on that control stick, Link. You got to got to tuck and roll, man. Tuck and roll. Um, let's see over here on our top ten non canonical appearances by Link, which is a, episode three of season three. Here, I did it with Shane Kelly up in Manitowoc. Mm. Like it was the last episode we did pre pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, S- Sayoran, S Y A O R A N. Uh, left us a a comment here on YouTube and it says, guys, I'm writing just so you know that you have at least one active listener here in Portugal, exclamation point, smiley face, already influencing a friend of mine. They really liked what he heard with me. I listen to you mostly while working and it gives me so much desire to just leave my work and go straight home and play a Zelda game. (laughs) Actually, now that I think about it, Wait, I lost my track. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, that may not be a good thing. Uh, tongue out face. I'm trying to like say these emojis. <laughs> Please continue with the hard work. Loving the new guests. Already on my second run in quotes. And uh, I think this 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 person's name is Jao. There's an accent in there. J-A, mm-hmm. J-O-A-O from Avro Port- Portugal. Aviro. I'm, I'm embarrassing myself. But <laughs> Joao. That is really awesome. Say Oran. Super cool. Portugal. Hello, Portugal. I love it. We got a fan over there. We got a fan of Zelda over there. And uh, I think I have just two left here. Here we go. Oh, this one's uh, a gentleman named Daniel Reed. He has messaged us before in other ways. I think he might even be a Patreon subscriber. Um, uh, Good day from Australia. Australia. Yeah. That's awesome. I discovered the podcast a few weeks ago. I'm a train driver over here in Australia and have been searching for a good podcast to listen to. Prior to tuning in, I've been on a bit of a journey to play through the Zelda games. I played the NES, the SNES, the N64, and a couple of handheld titles back in the day. And after picking up Breath of the Wild on the Switch a couple years back, I got motivated to pick up a clearance Wii U and finally played through Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD uh, after missing out on them new so like the first time Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see he goes on to say since then i've been a season and a half of the show and have loved it still working my way through the rest seeing the work you are obviously putting in behind the scenes i had to get on patreon and sign up that's right i i I did think i recognized daniel's uh (laughs) 
name here, Patreon, and sign up for a bit of support. This is the first time I've sponsored a podcast. Well, we are very grateful, Daniel. I love the dynamic between you and Kate and appreciate your takes because he's early in the show when it was just Kate and I. Mm -hmm. Um, When you and Kate and appreciate your takes on the subject matter, even if I've shouted at the podcast for factual mistakes you've made along the way. It does happen. If just being a fan. Mm -hmm. It does happen. Uh, uh, Fat laughy emoji. My (laughs) personal dream is for you to correctly address the world in Majora's Mask as Terminal. Yes, we've 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 done that. You're going to get there, Daniel. There was an episode where Mm -hmm. I uh, learned my lesson Uh, because for about a season I called it Termania. Uh, (laughs) But I'm a bit of a stickler. And lastly, he says, I'm sad to hear about Kate's family issues. Oh, so he is aware mm-hmm. a little bit of season three uh, behind the scenes. But I hope in her absence, you keep putting out great content. I'd love to see a deep dive episode on the timeline itself, talking about the split from Ocarina and a bit in a bit more detail, etc. I love the whole interpretation of the of the arc with Child Link because the hero's shade, be- Link becoming the hero's shade, etc. I'm a little confused by that, but anyway, hmm. we can probably follow up. I can follow up with him on Patreon. Yeah. Sorry for the ridiculously long message. Thanks again <laughs> for your hard work, and I can't wait to hear even more content. Cheers, Daniel. Daniel, thank you for your support over on Patreon, and even more so, thank you for giving us this listener feedback. I love, I, we can start leaving like little pins on a map of where yes. our listeners are messaging in from us, because it's so cool to see Do that it. it's, 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 all over the, it's all over the world now. A l- couple great. people here and there. So exciting. That's exciting. That's very exciting. I love it. Lastly, I have one more iTunes review and then we'll move on. Um, uh, In August, August 6th, so just a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, the DJ Clay said, another Zelda podcast. Oh, the title is Fantastic and Informative Zelda Podcast. Ooh, I think I have a good feeling about this review. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little. (laughs) Um, Another Zelda podcast has caused my love for Zelda to be reborn. I love listening to David, Kate, and the guests chat about different aspects of the franchise from music to gameplay to top 10 episodes. I have listened through every episode multiple times. It's my go-to for running and working. It brings a little bit of light into these times of pandemic quarantine, and I'm always looking forward to the next episode. Keep up the great work. Five stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DJ Clay, thank you so much. That is always uh, always nice to hear when people uh, tell us where and when they listen to the show. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of at work, a little bit of when I'm driving, a little less of when I'm driving these days because people are driving less. <laughs> but um, Alyssa. Yes. Kakariko Village. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember how this topic came up. I met, it might, we have a lot of like threads and boards internally with the mm-hmm. AZP crew who, how fun was it to play Smash Brothers last week with the whole, with the whole bunch? That was fun. Um, it was like literally my first time really playing. <laughs> <laughs> playing Smash? Yeah. You did and, well. Yeah. I, I mean, I used to play a lot of melee, uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. All right. So that's a lot of button mashing, and that this this one is not. But you know, my no. brother gave me some tips, so I'm ready for next time. <laughs> the, if you if if you get in a jam, you can kind of mash on that right stick, and it mm. auto smashes for you a little bit. So Ooh. if you want to do calculated moves, I wouldn't recommend it. But if they're just if people are just all around you, just start smashing on that right <laughs> stick, left, right, up, down, any way you want, and it'll help you. It'll help you clear the room a little bit. I'm gonna have to, yeah. But that was a lot of fun. We had a we had a just kind of on a whim we had like a game night with all the azp Mm -hmm. uh the guests that have been on the show and the azp blog writers and i don't know i'm kind of thinking we might turn it into an actual thing we do i I would love it yeah and maybe branch out into other different games that are multiple player that'd be really much fun i agree obviously there's like mario kart in there there's there's a few Mm -hmm. other options but it was a blast (laughs) so anyway so kakariko village i think it was on one of these threads i don't remember exactly who Mm -hmm. recommended it but um, what was the first Kakariko Village that you experienced in your gameplay? Was it Ocarina? Um, actually, it was Link to the Past. Yes, because of Because that's the first one I played when I was younger. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> let's talk about it, because I think let's go down kind of in release order here. We'll see how Kakariko Village mm-hmm. evolves and changes. Quick, uh, A couple you know, little headers, little yes. bullet points about Kakariko in general. I believe, I feel that it's never the same. Kakariko Village is a, is a village that shows up in many games. Yes. I have never interpreted it to be the exact exact same village from one game to another it's more just like a namesake yeah and i think um i think i would you agree with that that it's not oh yeah i agree in some games it has a lot more going on with it and others it's kind of like there may be a couple things you can do there but mm-hmm. you just need to just like pass on by um but i feel like in every um in every game that has a kakariko village is definitely there's a lot of differences in my opinion yeah um i think <laughs> the one similarity is that it, it does either directly or in an adjacent way it does create a a a bit of a hub or an emotional weight it's always like it's the one big village yes you know what i mean yeah it's one of the most like you'll you'll go there more than once at least 
hey, that's really well said. You're right. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Certainly. So yes. let's talk about um, A Link to the Past, Kakariko Village. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on in A Link to the Past, Kakariko Village. There really is. <laughs> and, I never fully mm-hmm. appreciated it until our season two finale. Yeah. There's a lot of places you need to go to there for important items. Um, like you get a lot of heart pieces. You get uh, the catching net. You get yeah. a bottles. You get... You double your magic in one part in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people you need to visit and talk to. Many times for Many different times. reasons. Yeah. There's that yeah. whole second version of it. What is it called? Like the, the yeah. Town of Thieves or something? It's the, the dark version the of it. Village of Outcasts. The Village of Outcasts. I have it in my yeah. notes now. Yep. So, and, and then once it's in the dark the dark um, <laughs> Kakariko village, village of outcasts, you do, yep. you get like two more heart pieces, more glass bottles, more stuff that you have to go there for, which is like... You know, you're you're visiting that a lot. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, I had such a strange relationship with A Link to the Past. The first couple of times I played it when I was younger, I didn't mm-hmm. care for it that much because I had played Ocarina first. Right. And so I was, I, to me, Ocarina was not my first Zelda game, but I went back to A Link to the Past and it was difficult for me to adjust to that play style, even though I had previously played Link's Awakening. But if you think about it, A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening, even though there's so many similarities and A Link to the uh, Link's Awakening is this kind of spiritual um, development successor to A Link to the Past where the crew basically said can we put A Link to the Past on Game right. Boy yes. but they do play very differently mm-hmm. you know no, um, I agree. Link's, Link's actual mechanics in A Link to the Past in my opinion are the hardest to control maybe the adventure of Link is more difficult to control Link but I digress um, so for <laughs> me I did not have romantic thoughts about Kakariko Village mm-hmm. um, for decades, honestly. Right. I, I actually kind of disliked it in the in the Super Nintendo version. Okay. But, but there are so many things that happen there. Um, I think I was a little overwhelmed with it the first time I, I went to went to because you know you're doing the shifting tiles, which I love the whole shifting tiles of the 2D games. Yeah. But um, I think I was a little overwhelmed. What 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 was it like for you the first time you entered Kakariko Village for Super Nintendo? Um trying to bring up my <laughs> my thing went crazy bringing up your notes oh did, did your computer go to sleep or something no it's just it's a little wonky it's okay it's okay. you got it it's all right yeah i got it well i mean <laughs> like i didn't feel for me mm-hmm. and i don't mean to be negative here but no. i have to confess uh the first couple times i went into kakariko village even on our replay mm-hmm. i didn't feel like oh i'm home you know like right. breath of the wild kakariko village you're like oh my gosh i'm home <laughs> you know <laughs> no i get you yeah it it did kind of just feel like uh a stop that you just need to go to to advance in the story. Um, but once you start having to go there repeatedly, it is yeah. kind of like, okay, I get it. This is a kind of important area I need to be in. Yeah. So I felt like to me. <laughs> I think that's a good observation, actually. In fact, mm-hmm. I think I can speak to that because I didn't really start to warm up to Kakariko Village until... Uh, I guess the second half of A Link to the Past when I did mm-hmm. finally play through the whole game. Yes. And then it, then you have that emotional thing of just, you're just going back to that place that you recognize mm-hmm. but you have to do different well, things. Yeah, I mean, you you need to go there um, for a lot of important stuff. I think part of a map, you have to go to like that library place. You, you gotta need knock to, the book down. And, yeah, yeah. you need you just need so much to just make sure you're powered up enough mm-hmm. for the rest of it. The so. whole warp zone thing is yes. like hidden in Kakariko Village. Yeah, there. it is. The so duck. <laughs> the chicken whatever it is I, oh yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean that's like the first one the first kakariko village i've had to i actually i didn't realize when i was younger that this was going to be like in a lot of zelda games so you know i wonder if they didn't even realize it's possible that kakariko what okay so it was in 64 ocarina Mm-hmm. I, I still sometimes accidentally refer to Ocarina of Time as Zelda 64 in my head oh. by accident. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, it wasn't Ocarina, and that's really what set the trend. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep going down the line here, but I don't yeah. think Kakariko Village was in Majora's Mask. No, certainly no. not Majora's Mask. And I, I think not list. Wind Waker either. I made a list of which ones they're in. So you got huh? Link to the Past, uh, Ocarina of Time, mm-hmm. Link Between Worlds. Twilight Princess, uh, Four Swords Adventures, yes. and apparently Cadence of Hyrule, but I haven't. I don't know. You know, I've played Cadence of Hyrule a little bit. I feel like maybe I've gotten to Kek. It is. Mm-hmm. You know what? No, I have been there. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. It, it's Cadence of Hyrule is a fun game, but it just feels so different that sometimes oh. you can be in a familiar area and it may not feel the same. Yeah, I haven't played that one just yet. I don't know. I have mixed emotions about Cadence of Hyrule. Okay. I'm, I'm a fan of the concept. <laughs> I'm a fan of the concept, but every time I play it. I go, I think I just want to go play Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm over here having a hard time in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> uh, 
Well, you dipped back in today, right? Yeah, I dipped or back yesterday. In. No, literally this morning, dipped yeah. back in after a week of not playing and um, got killed three times in a row. So fantastic. It, it doesn't like me. I'm, but I am determined to continue playing. <laughs> Are you in master mode or anything like that? Or no, you just doing normal. Yeah, just normal. Yeah. Just trying to get through. It's my first time trying to get through the game. Um, because I've, I played maybe a little bit of it when it first came out. Um, but you know, life <laughs> stuff happened, yeah. and now I got my own uh switch, and I was like, I'm gonna play it on my own and figure it out on my own, and I'm struggling a little. <laughs> Yeah, that can happen. That's but that's also some of the fun of Breath of the Wild. Um, okay, well, why don't we move on to the Kakariko Village yes. in Ocarina? Yeah, that was my first Kakariko Village, really. Obviously, um, I remember being a, less over. I remember instead of feeling overwhelmed the first time I went into Kakariko Village in the, in sixty four, um, it felt big. It felt you know you play it now, it's mm-hmm. like okay, it's just a couple. Yeah. yeah, but it felt enormous, honestly, when I was I a kid. Really, same when I was younger and I played it, it felt bigger. And then when I got went back to it, I was like, "This is a pretty small town." Yeah, it's really just like a little, a couple rectangles. But <laughs> yeah. the one thing they did do nice is they made it feel. I think it was a bit of a trick. They made the village feel bigger by mm-hmm. twisting and turning all the houses face slightly different ways, and you have to kind of snake around to find different things. It's yeah. always, I think, what helps it feel bigger is you're always kind of discovering more. Yeah, you know? and there's some buildings you can go into, some you cannot. Yeah, that's and then right. The path, there's one path that takes you to Death Mountain, and then the path behind that takes you to the graveyard. So if they made it, they made it seem spacious. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And you technically have slightly two different versions of Kakariko. Mm-hmm. You have the the one Young Link version, you could say, and yes. then the one from seven years later. Yes, this is true. Um, would you Would you care to speak to uh, some of the changes that happen? Um, yeah, um, so... The big thing is nobody's living in Hyrule Castle anymore. Yeah, so basically it becomes like a refuge for the people who are escaping from, you know, the Raf. <laughs> the Ganon's Raf. Um, so also you, you know, it's revealed that what Impa is one of the stages. You have to deal with that there. Yeah, yeah. Because you have the, um... The well, the shadow temple. Well, the shadow temple is in the graveyard, but yeah, the oh, well, yeah. the whole but well also, thing. You're right. The well thing always made me laugh as a kid. The fact that you had to drive the windmill, <laughs> dude, like insane to make the be by a song. I mean, that always just freaked me out. I was like, why is he freaking out? Because I'm playing to him the song, but I have to do it to get in the well. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? And is it that the st- is it that it rains mm-hmm. and the well filled? No, the well's already filled up. Mm-hmm. It's that you make a storm and it makes the windmill go faster, isn't that yeah. right? And then that drains the water and it drains the well <laughs> the windmill works too well yeah i remember that um when i was a kid for sure like that that's a, stuck in my head it's a pretty good cutscene too when when mm-hmm. i think basically bongo bongo is technically coming out of the the oh, bottom yeah. of the well and he's flying around i remember that was that was the mm-hmm. first cutscene in the game where i was like oh it's getting real yeah like when you come back and it's like on also like on fire and you're like mm-hmm. the spirit was, has escaped and now i have to help defeat it because you know the whole town Kakariko village is on fire oh no um i recall as young link spending hours in Kakariko village just there's all mm-hmm. these you know the, all these l- cute little puzzles and just trying to figure out how to get around there's mm-hmm. the f- maybe not the first chicken quest but i feel like maybe the first time yeah. we did a chicken quest oh yeah I, th- I remember the first time i ever had a chicken quest was ocarina of time Kakariko village uh-huh. and I, I was just like oh the chicken it's also the first time i discovered that I guess in Link to the Past, I didn't hit any of the chickens before. Yeah. But Ocarina of Time, I'm like, I was a kid. I was like, I'm going to hit this chicken a few times. And I got attacked <laughs> and swarmed. And I learned, oh, don't do that ever. Yep, yep, it's it true. Is, you got that. And you also have the Skultula house, which when you get the golden yeah. the golden Skultulas, so you can get like a bigger wallet and stuff like that to carry more um, rupees. I remember my sisters were always really scared whenever I would go in there. And it's spooky. Ocarina of Time was the kind of game where I, I would play and my sisters would play. We'd all play but sometimes mm-hmm. when i was playing i had a um i don't want to say that i was more brave no not at all not at all but i was a little bit more ex- as a boy i was a little bit more excited to see those creepy scary things <laughs> um and my sisters would always say like don't go in there don't, don't go in there david don't go in there and it was a little creepy but i remember no, thinking oh this is so hardcore this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> you're like yes and they're like no it, it was it's it those scatellas are um, with the, they got the arms hanging up. Hey, by the way, speaking of Skatella, yeah. I think you have your newest tattoo is a Skatella over yes, here. Yes, my I got two new ones. I got Skatella. Can the camp? Can the Patreon people see it? I'm Look at not that. Sure, if you want, I'll send you pictures. I'll zoom in. Yeah. Oh, I can, you can send a picture. And I'll put it on Twitter. <laughs> and I got a hero's bow also. You have a whole Zelda experience happening on your arms. Yeah. 
I heard you say before we recorded that you have 10 tattoos and six of them are Zelda tattoos. Yes, they are. That's cool. <laughs> like I said, it's a... Uh, I don't know. I like to express my nerdiness like that way. Yeah. So it's it's what I do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, the Skultula house with them being half human ish and half spider freaked me out. It was a, a curse, right? Isn't that what yeah. happened? They were they were a super yeah. wealthy family, and I yes. don't know if they did wrong or anything. Maybe they did, and then they got cursed. They got cursed, and the only way for you to help them out is to get the golden Skultulas and you know get the little gem after killing it. So how far did you ever get with those Skultulas? I think I always only got maybe two maybe three of those kids released yeah i think the most i got is maybe three yeah i think i i always know i've i mean i know that i've usually i almost always got like the second level the first one mm. i don't even remember what the thing is but basically once you get the slightly bigger wallet i yeah. kind of think i have to confess i was kind of like okay i'm good yeah <laughs> oh, that's fine no. whatever just keep going with the adventure they're very good with how you, um how many rupees you needed for certain items in the game it wasn't like in um yeah. Yeah. Not like a Madrid's mask where you can get thousands of rupees and hold it in a bank. <laughs> oh, that's right. There's a bank in Majora's Mask. You're right. Yeah. Now that's an example. Majora's Mask, it's not it's not Kakariko Village, but that's mm-hmm. an example where there is a part of town where it's just mm-hmm. building, 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 all lined up next to each other. Yep. That's where that bank is. Yep. It has a different feel than, than like a Kakariko Village. Yeah. It's kind of like the kind of an equivalent to Kakariko since mm-hmm. you're always there and there's lots of quests you need to do there. I would say that Termania feels quite different termina <laughs> it's termina dude <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i don't know where i got termania i think i've called it termania my whole life i'm i'm very dyslexic i've said it before on the show and mm-hmm. i think i just like read it wrong and also i mean probably no one corrected you if no one corrected you oh my gosh i think you're onto something here so <laughs> ocarina of time i was a senior in high school when that came out Okay. And my sisters, my sister was two years younger than me, and then the other sister was five years younger. So oh, okay. the one two years younger, she could still play, and the you know the one that was seven years younger than me, she'd want to play, but then ask me to do all the bosses basically. Mm-hmm. But by the time Majora's Mask came out, I was in I was a freshman in college. In fact, uh, I was going to school here in Chicago at Columbia College for film, and that game i didn't it, i did not have the community experience of mm. having my sisters kind of play and i watched them or i played and they watched me and we'd all help each other out and talk about things that one i did play essentially in my dorm room on my own so it's true i probably did read termania and yeah. uh, never never did get corrected no one corrected you until so. decades later <laughs> when passionate fans which i'm actually grateful for helped yeah. me realize that it's termania like I got corrected. I mean, I I got corrected all the time by my brother because mm-hmm. I used to play. Me and my brother are only a year apart, so we used to play games all the time together. So he used to correct me, and my cousin used to correct do me. Do you say Bacoblin or do you say Bokoblin? Bacoblin. Yeah, so I do too. Yeah. Bacoblin, because it's like it kind of feels like it's off the idea of like <laughs> saying Goblin. It's yeah. a Bacoblin. Yeah. But I think there's other people that say Bokoblin, Bacoblin. and that could, could be true too. I, I say Bacoblin, my brother hasn't corrected me, so <laughs> <laughs> I love I'll it. stick to it. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. All right. Anyway, any other standouts in Kakariko Village in Frakarina? Um, I remember like loving climbing that tower. That was the first time where you really mm-hmm. felt like some some expanse in a, mm-hmm. in a because also the going into Kakariko Village in Ocarina of Time. Just as players, it was the first time we were learning what three dimensional space. Oh yeah, how it worked. Mm-hmm. Castletown is not three-dimensional no. in, in that you're not navigating up and down and left and right. There's a little bit. If you get clever, you can go up on that little balcony, but there's not a lot of that. No, not a lot of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you do learn um, very much important songs at this Kakariko village yeah. and you can get up to eight heart pieces, which is... What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I looked it up and I'm like, I need to watch a video as to where all these are because I think I've probably <laughs> only gotten half of those from this place. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, I even on um on YouTube I found a uh someone I guess made a VR world of Kakariko Village. And it's I'm in. you should look at just literally put like VR World Ocarina of Time yes. um Kakariko Village. Yeah. And this dude's just like walking around and, and it, it's so crazy. And you can he goes through like the graveyard and stuff. And I was just like That's cool. I looked at it because I'm like, I need to rejog this memory of what I want to talk about. Oh today. sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really fun watching that. <laughs> I I uh, taking us to our next Kakariko Village here, mm-hmm. which would, in release order, it's technically Four Swords Adventures. And I'd be happy to talk about it. I'm guessing mm-hmm. you've probably never played Four Swords Adventures. No, I have not. I was lucky enough to have a couple friends where we, we were, no one sought it, like, how do I say this? Mm-hmm. 
Four Swords Adventures came out, and I had three other friends that also had Game Boy SPs and their cords. Oh. And like <laughs> nobody went out and bought extra stuff just to play these games. Okay. But since the four of us like to play video games, and we got together once a week or whatever, I think it was Sunday nights back then to play. It was the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. We did play Pac-Man Versus, which was the game that need, required all the Game Boys to be connected. Mm-hmm. We did play Crystal Chronicles for GameCube, which now has oh. just come out on Switch. Um, we did play Four Swords mm-hmm. Adventure. So all these like okay. really games that required a lot of equipment to play. Look at that. I, I muted my phone, but the, uh, <laughs> the computer is not muted. It's like, there we go. I'm here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we did play Four Swords Adventures organically. It was a blast. It's a it's a little weird because you kind of technically have levels, mm-hmm. and there's a few other things that make it. I mean, I was thinking like four people in in a Zelda game at the same time. I'm in, but it's a little bit more focused. The screen. So it came out after Wind Waker, okay. And so there are some Wind Waker aesthetics going on. The smoke blasts when you like defeat an enemy. Oh, okay. Do the swirly smoke blasts, but it's mm-hmm. a little weird because the the I would say that the aesthetics of the game with the exception of some of the wind waker and e-ness mm-hmm. is more a link to the past the look of the trees the look of the buildings the look of everything is very a link to the past <clears throat> oh, okay one thing that's super cool about four swords adventures and i will find it and buy it and we will play it yeah <laughs> on an original gamecube we're gonna find some sps or we're gonna find some game mm-hmm. boy players and hook up a bunch bunch of gamecubes we're gonna I'm figure down. it out um I will definitely uh, invite you to that whenever mm-hmm. this happens i have no idea how we're gonna find all this equipment but <laughs> Um, boy, that would be one that would be great to port over to Switch. But actually, maybe it wouldn't because Four Swords Adventures mm-hmm. definitely required the alternate screen on your Game Boy. So like when you go oh. into a building, mm-hmm. the main screen on the TV stays in the overworld, I guess you could say. Okay. And then your Game Boy uh, screen huh. becomes inside the building oh. point of view. So the, the reason this is actually really smart because if you have four people on a map, and let's mm-hmm. say you're in Kakariko Village, and right. one person goes into a town... Mm-hmm. They're not going to warp the other three people into that building. The other three people oh. can keep walking around the overworld while that while the person goes into the building. That's so it's actually smart. it's actually really smart. That's it just smart. Rec- I, I had no idea. So the thing about Four Stars Adventures is that it's great mm-hmm. and logistically, gameplay wise, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, each of the four links get their own specialties. One gets like a compass. One gets hints about the bosses. So it forces you to talk to each other about things. One person, their special ability is that they kind of can tell when treasures are nearby. It's it's very cool. It's just too bad that it took a lot of hardware to play this game. Yeah. Sounds like it. All the, I mean, if you really add it all up and you're getting the SPs, that's like $600. And then the GameCube, if that was back down when it was two, you're spending almost $800 just to play a game Technically, I mean, granted, people bought these things to play other games too, but that's right. like eight hundred dollars worth of equipment. You could say I'm just doing some quick math here. Right. Uh, maybe by the time the Game Boys were a hundred bucks, <laughs> maybe by the time the Game Boys, okay, fine, it's five hundred, but still, I digress. So, Kakariko mm-hmm. Village is in Four Swords Adventures, mm-hmm. and I think maybe we'll go to break after this. Yeah. Um, but it's a level. It's mm-hmm. not like a hub world or home world. Oh, okay. It's 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 maybe third, fourth, or fifth level or something like that. And I do remember it. And it's it is kind of a link to the past inspired in that there are thieves afoot. Okay. And you're kind of collecting the thieves and you have to like kind of put them in jail. Oh. <laughs> there's, I remember there's like a, it's almost like a chicken quest where you're throwing the chickens into like oh, a fenced in area. Okay. But you're doing it with humans. <laughs> you're picking up people. Okay. <laughs> and all the different links are running around picking up people. And there's kind of puzzles to find the thieves. Mm-hmm. Some are just hiding. Some you have to. Oh, and there's a bunch of um, shadow links running around too. I remember that. Really? Now. Yeah. And it's a little weird. Because I learned today, when I was doing a little bit of research in my Zelda encyclopedia here, that there's a difference between Shadow Link and a difference between Shadow Link and Dark Link. Yeah, I, I heard. Never knew. I, I heard there's there's definitely a difference. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I always thought it was the same. Um, yeah. But anyway, so there's Shadow Links running all over the place. And I do remember, the one thing that's a little different is, for example, the first three or four levels in Four Swords Adventures, they're almost i won't say they're linear but they're almost linear it's like okay. imagine doing like a um zora's river run okay in a link to the past you're yeah fine it's open you can go anywhere you want but you're kind of mm-hmm. hiking up the river right yeah exactly. a lot of the early levels in Forcers adventures feel that way mm-hmm. this is technically a level you never go back really to kakariko village if i remember correctly okay, so that's a difference it's not sure. a hub thing mm-hmm. but it is a slightly different level design where they kind of just plop you down in this 19 screen 
mm-hmm. level and you just run around and try to figure out the puzzles. So for a multiplayer game that is typically fairly linear, mm-hmm. this was the least linear level, if I recall correctly. Okay. So I feel like, okay, yeah, I feel like they honored the Kakariko, the village idea. Village idea of it, yeah. the village word for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that really sticks out. There's, mm-hmm. there's a cool boss at the end mm-hmm. where um, you... Oh, wow. I just realized something. <laughs> so the boss at the end is like a shadow skeleton. Oh, right. Or rather, it's a skeleton. It's like one of these big skeletal, not a skeletal, it's one of these big. Like the Stalfos? Like the Stalfos, uh-huh. thank you. A bit like the Stalfos that is in Majora's Mask or mm-hmm. whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> when you get to the, when you get out of Kakariko Village and you get to this area where you have the big boss, you can't, all the little links are running around, or I guess, you know, you're running around as a <laughs> yeah. link, and you can't do anything to the shadow. Oh, I get it. I, there, I realized just now that they were hinting at the big bad shadow guy by having all the shadow links run around oh. in Kekuka Village, they being the designers. <laughs> Anyways, you get there and you can't hurt this boss. You can't hurt this shadow. And you have to learn that you can uh, enter some portals, I think, by defeating other enemies or maybe you pull something out of the ground. And then you go to a different dimension and that dimension is represented on your Game Boy screen. Oh, wow. And then there's an experience where your Game Boy screen and the TV screen Mm. are one-to-one exactly the same view. But on your Game Boy, you can see the bad guy. And then up on the TV, you can move your link. And so then you've got to like look at the look at your screen to kind of see where this person is in a different dimension. <laughs> so that up on the screen you can get your link in the right place. See, it's it was cool. You're you're like selling me on this game now, darn it. I, I wanna play it. <laughs> see, that sounds like so it's so intricate and so interesting. And I I, I love that. It's there there will be a day. You know, right now we're <laughs> in this living room over here in this corner that nobody can see it. Our patrons can't see it, and our <laughs> listeners can't see it, but where that cat scratch post is, that's going to be a small console where I'll put mm-hmm. a console where I'll put my consoles. Oh, yes. You know, a little <laughs> shelf system where I'm going to put a lot of my retro consoles and then they'll go up to the TV there. Mm-hmm. Once that happens, I think Four Swords Adventures is, is a must. Yes. I'm also kind of kicking myself. Be- wow, who thought that it'd be a child screaming, not the psychids? The cicadas, I mean. Cicadas. Psychids, what is that? Uh, coming through <laughs> the windows. Some child is very upset down so, on the street right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like- They're squealing. squealing. But anyway. Um, <laughs> So um, are you familiar with, there's a used video game store in Wicker Park here in Chicago, and I think it starts with an R. I don't remember its name. So there's, I think there's... Um, video Games Then and Now is the one that I usually go to, but that's out west a little bit. I don't know if it's still there. There's also one called People Play Games. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, one of my friends used to work there. I'm not sure if it's still around. This is like 10 years ago, so I'm not sure yeah. if it's still around. I'll probably look it up. But then there, um, I still go to... Um, Oh my god, the exchange. Oh, that's it. The exchange. The exchange. I, I go there all the time. I don't know why I thought it started with an R. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so I was at the exchange about a year ago, and mm-hmm. Four Swords Adventures was there. The game because it's a GameCube game, technically, in its case. Mm-hmm. And I remember like saying to the, the friends that I was with, I was like, "Oh, cool!" And we were maybe you know like a season in on EZP. Okay. And it was like, "I'll buy it next time I'm here." Of course it. Of course no. it got bought. See, so I was like, what was I, I thinking? I should have just gotten it. Man, I haven't been since this uh, whole pandemic yeah. thing. But I, I do. They are open. I do want to go back and um, hmm. check out what else they have. But I go to the. I used to go to the exchange at least once every two weeks. Once every two weeks. <laughs> once a month or once every week, yeah. depending on um, how much money I was willing to spend. <laughs> I go to I go to video games then and now, which is which is mm-hmm. out a little bit west. Mm-hmm. Um, about once a month. Usually it's like after work, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to take the long cut today. Well, see, now I want to go see these places so we can make this Four Swords adventure. Just- we got to find it. We got to find it. <laughs> we got to do it. <laughs> it's a fun game. So that's Kakariko Village in mm-hmm. Four Swords Adventures. It's it's recognized. Mm-hmm. It's, in my opinion, honored. You know, it's not something that you go back to, but in mm-hmm. that level, it has the feeling of a village. Yeah. And it's great. It's very, very cool. All right, let's mm-hmm. go to break. And when we come back, I think, what is it? Is it going to be Twilight Princess? Ooh, we're going to kick off with Twilight Princess, I think, if we're doing a release order. Plenty to talk about there. That is a staple in that game. You almost spend more time in in, uh, Kakariko Village than you do, like, in Castletown in Twilight Princess. This is true. All right, great. We'll take a quick break. You'll hear some ads, and I'll see you in a minute. Awesome. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. And And we we are are brothers-in-law. We both love beer and are amateur homebrewers. Wait, so does that make us... Brothers-in-law? 
<laughs> I believe so. Every episode, we will talk about aspects of beer and home brewing. But nothing super technical because we're learning this too. So join us as we sit down together and dive into something beer related. Whether it's a little field research, tasting a certain beer style or beers from a specific brewery. Talk about our experiences brewing beer at home, including our own solo brews, as well as themed competitions we'll set up along the way. We will also talk about some of our favorite aspects of brewing, like hops, extra ingredients, building our brew cave, and more. And of course, our own misadventures that have happened along the way. So, if you like beer, are home brewing already, or if you have an interest in home brewing and don't know where to start, join us on Brewers in Law podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at Brewers in Law and check out our website brewersinlaw.com. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly make must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. All right, we are back. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be doing this again, Alyssa. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't uh, express that enough, honestly. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a nice little episode to kind of get back in the swing. Yes, I like it. So we've got, we have. Hey, what's, what's like your unofficial top three Zelda games? Unofficial top. Is three? Twilight Princess in any of them? Like. Favorite Zelda games. Favorite Zelda games. I feel like Twilight Princess would be if I had finished playing it. I oh, never okay. really finished it. Okay. You got into but, Kakariko Village, though, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I got into Kakariko Village. Um, Twilight Princess is one of those um, games that um, got put aside because of life. Okay. And I never just picked back up. I was in... Yeah. I want to um, mm-hmm. because I like the aesthetics. I like how it looks. Yeah. Um, I like the whole... Um, what do you call it? The whole shadowy and and wolf and midnight and like oh, all that. Oh sure, sure. I, I get, love yeah. that aesthetic. In the game, they call it mm-hmm. Twilight Realm, but the like Twilight. That kind of that's like, what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's Twilight Princess. The, 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 tw- the Twilly live the in the Twilight Realm or something, right? The Twilly, right? Yeah. Yeah, Twilly. I think so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I loved Twilight Princess. Um, I am kind of halfway through playing it slowly. Uh, the HD remix mm-hmm. or remake? I'm sorry, remake. on Wii U. And I got to be honest, I'm happy to be playing it on a widescreen. I'm happy to be playing it with. More slightly more modern controls. Yes, but I kind of miss the GameCube look or the Wii. The Wii, but I, I have the GameCube the version. Mm-hmm. And um, Twilight Princess looks rock. So- it looks amazing yeah. on GameCube. It really does. I think they <laughs> they kind of dialed down the bloom effects a bit on the on the HD remake. Right. And it's just so goopy and golden and realistic looking. Yeah, I have, on the GameCube. Uh, I have the Wii U, or is it the Wii or the Wii U? And I have it. I have the game. <laughs> I just mm-hmm. have to pick it back up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, anyways, yeah. So it's mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. It does it 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 has kind of a curve to it, Twilight Princess, in mm-hmm. general. It starts very slow in a good way, in my opinion. Yeah. And then it starts speeding up. Um, mm-hmm. meaning like I think it's an hour or two of gameplay before you even get to the first dungeon in Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. And then after that, then there's a lot of story, and then there's a there's a quest where you're protecting the carriage, and then you finally get to your second dungeon. There's all oh, this yeah. stuff in the middle. As the game progresses, by the time you hit dungeon number 10, 11, and 12, it's kind of like, next dungeon, next dungeon, next dungeon. Right. And then a couple of those final dungeons, even though they're all great, but like you get to like a Twilight dungeon, and there isn't even a mid-boss. It's just mm-hmm. the dungeon. You get to the end. So it does kick up a little bit mm-hmm. speed-wise if you're okay. worried about finishing it. 
I'm trying to make I'm, I'm trying to make the abbreviated nature of the second half be a positive here. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> but we can't complain. Twilight Princess has like 14 dungeons, which I mean, there's some Zelda games that have four. So yeah. if a few of them are a little bit smaller, I honestly can't complain. Yeah, I wanna. I definitely wanna get back into it. And- well, Kakariko Village mm-hmm. in this one's quite different. Yes, <laughs> it definitely is. I really get it's like a, a fallen into despair kind of. Uh, it gives me that old west dusty town. Definitely. In yeah. fact, there's almost no one living there. No, no, like no one. <laughs> it's broken down. Mm-hmm. Dirt Which road. Which is so different yeah. than the other previous Kakari because even well, maybe the Four Swords Adventure one's kind of broken down because there's just a bunch of thieves living there. <laughs> yeah. That you throw into a pen, but <laughs> <laughs> but the other two Kakariko villages up to this point, at least in release order, were. Um, Kind of bustling, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I would say maybe the castle towns are actually bustling now that I think about it. But yeah. but they had life in them. This yeah. one is like a couple people are camping in one building, and that's about it. Yeah, exactly, definitely. And then there's it's literally broken down. You you run around as a wolf and fall into buildings for certain <laughs> items. It's true. Stuff, um, to do the uh, the tears of light um kind of challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you have to hear the sad stories of the kids like I want to go home and it's like Yeah. That was touching though. It is. Yeah. It is, but it's literally like oh there's like five people here. It's broken down and dusty and we're it's just like oh my god what's going on. <laughs> After a while the Gorons kind of mm-hmm. come and populate a little bit, but yeah. they're mostly just there to spring you up onto stuff. <laughs> basically, basically. I got to be honest. I always, I always, I, remember, I loved Kakariko Village and Twilight Princess. I thought it looked super cool. Mm-hmm. I, it does have a little bit of that exploring stuff where once you start getting up on the rooftops, you can kind of find, you find that little um, healing well up top oh, on that little yeah. canyon you might recall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is kind of fun to try to climb all the way up by the bomb shop and go way up high on that. There's that post that's super high. You can look down and see the whole village. Yeah. Um, there's the the archery range just off to the side, and you actually mm-hmm. go to oh, this is interesting. You go to Death Mountain from Kakariko Village, yeah. just like in Ocarina. Just like in Ocarina, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that the path to to Death Mountain. I did. Mm-hmm. I did always enjoy kind of exploring the broken down. I would call it a hotel. There was kind of like a little mm-hmm. inn. Oh yeah, a little inn mm-hmm. that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um What are standouts for you for Kakariko Village? Uh, just off I the put, top of your head. Oh, I put the re- reuniting with Epona. Oh, yes, so you're right. So I remember that. Holy cow. I put that in there. I didn't write more about it, but I, I did. That was something that I remembered um, from playing. Um, besides that, you, I, I don't know why I always put these in my notes. Um, you acquire up to four heart pieces when you're there. <laughs> heart pieces. Very important to Alyssa. <laughs> I you know. You should have been in our alternate ways to get hearts episode. Well, yeah. I, I always um, I either... I either over explore for it because I'm just like, I, I, I want more life because I hate dying so easily. <laughs> I'm not very good at fighting. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. No problem. I need more hearts. Yeah. yeah. So I always over explore when it comes to heart pieces. <laughs> I am one of the few that actually favor hearts over stamina and breath of the wild. Actually. That's what I'm leaning towards. Right. Mm-hmm. Now. <laughs> A lot of people go the other way. They, they favor mm-hmm. stamina. But what I did on my second playthrough of breath of the wild in master mode, mm-hmm. instead of going to the Zoras right away, I went to the Rito and just got that Revolvies or Revolvies Gale jump. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that, that solved a lot of my stamina issues. I, I was able to <laughs> climb cliffs that way instead of like... Yeah. And so for master mode, I went for more hearts. But anyway, yeah. So Kakariko Village, plenty of hearts. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of good cutscenes in Kakariko Village in Twilight mm-hmm. Princess. That's a true. lot of emotional ones with, with Colin, the little boy. Oh, yeah. Oh. He looks up to Link. Um, mm-hmm. um, the second attack of the... I'll call them Moblins. Oh, yeah. The, they come in and that big guy, that big pig guy. A lot of emotions in that town, honestly. Yes. Very emotional. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to go back to it now. <laughs> um, I- Ilya is mm-hmm. questioning Link in the town. She's right. getting nervous and stuff. There's a, Yeah, there's a lot going on. So story-wise, there's a lot happening in that Kakariko village. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> life-wise, <laughs> not as much. <laughs> yeah. I literally, uh, I want to just see like some... some uh, goblins at each side just do kind of like a wild west shootout with the way it looks in the beginning <laughs> yeah you get a little bit of that in the cat town mm-hmm. thing mini game yeah thing. but like still like dirt road broken down things lots of emotions and storylines so i it's, it's an interesting different take on kakariko village for sure we're about to talk about another kakariko village that has mm-hmm. a different take but let's stay on this twilight princess one for mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. um for you when you think about that that kakariko village um do you feel it's well represented. Do you feel it was a good choice for them to, to, to for um, 
Nintendo to make such a different mm-hmm. aesthetic choice with Kakariko? I think for how the how different Twilight Princess is, definitely. Yeah. Um, because it's it's still Kakariko Village. Uh, it's still one of the villages you go to a lot. Like you know, Link to to pass. It's like something you're gonna visit visit a lot. Yeah. Um, aesthetically, they just went with with, with it with the game, which is like there's this this twilly Twilight thing going on. There's a lot of very crazy emotional stuff going on, and I really like I I think they I think they did really good with this Kakariko Village for the game. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I remember liking it as well. I really mm-hmm. do. I did. It's definitely not. Yeah, it's not the kind of. Vill- so I, you know what I remember now, is going to that link to the past, Kekariko and being almost a little overwhelmed, which is so weird to say. But it was like, <laughs> uh, there's too many houses. Which house do I go in? Oh um, no, same. Yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> a lot of towns in even like the Oracle series have that. Sometimes once you get to that first hub town, you're kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't even know. There's don't so even know. Much. And you Where just gotta start go? going into stuff and looking around. <laughs> What do um, I do? Th- this Kekariko village, I remember looking around and being like, oh, nothing here? Okay. Oh, nothing here? Okay. Oh, nothing here? Okay. Mm-hmm. But they do kind of hold your hand a little bit with that t- with that um, Pearls of Light quest. Yes. Mm-hmm. They, they help you, you learn where a lot of the buildings are, don't they? Yeah. It definitely guides you so you know where to go and uh, where you don't really need to be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely the Pearls of Light helps in a lot of areas in that in that game, for sure. Yeah, I, I, the Pearls of Light showed up again in Skyward Sword, and I was less excited about it there, but it felt mm-hmm. fine in Twilight Princess. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, the bomb shop happens. We we, we oh, get yeah. bombs there in Kakariko Village. Yep, got bombs. That's what you got there. Mido, no, the little boy, not Mido. Um, Mi- Mio, Miko, Me- Mimo. He uh, the little the little baby boy. <laughs> he sets up a shop there after a while. Oh then. yeah, is it the weird one with the eyebrows? He does have the tiny eyebrows. A lot the of tiny t- eyebrows <laughs> in Twilight Princess. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like they just decided to have like <laughs> half shaved eyebrows on everyone. Yeah. I don't understand that. It looks funny. But a lot of cosplayers do that now, so I get it, I guess. Oh, wow. (laughs) Interesting. So technically, the next one is A Link Between Worlds. And I've only just started playing A Link Between Worlds because I didn't want to play it until after playing A Link to the Past. I didn't make any notes for A Link Between Worlds. That's perfectly fine. I don't know much about Kakariko Village and A Link Between Worlds because I haven't experienced Mm -hmm. it too much yet. I um I'm on my I'm only halfway through the second dungeon of A Link Between Worlds. Right. I'm playing it on the 3DS. I am playing it in 3D. I've got the 3D cranked to the max. Okay. And I'm loving it. I really mm-hmm. am liking it. That's why I bought that 3DS dock the other day, mm-hmm. so I can just kind of click it in at my desk, pull it out, play for a little bit, put it back in. Right. Um, it's one of those games where the 3D is serviceable and is good, but um, Kakariko Village, other than it being kind of physically in the same spot as A Link to the Past, because mm-hmm. Link Between Worlds is a bit of a sequel. Right. Nothing's really sticking out for me, honestly, about this one, I have mm-hmm. to say. Nothing so far. But it's technically mm-hmm. there, and it's there because it's in A Link to the Past. Oh, okay. I think, it'll, I think it's another one that probably has those portal, portals between the worlds. Thing. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> for some reason, I skipped it. Would you say that they it. link you between worlds? <laughs> ha! Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. <laughs> Interesting. What am I doing? Link puns. <laughs> it's the punniest. But I mean, we can go to we can go to Breath of the Wild if you want, because I think that's the next yeah, one. Breath of the Wild. I just mm-hmm. love this town. But, I, but how about you? I do. I love it. Too. I just love it. I love how what where you ha- how you have to travel to get there, and it's kind of like a nook. It's very lively. It has lots of you know the farms. It's where you meet. Um, I wrote it to Impa. Impa, Impa, yeah. Impa, nice yeah. old Impa just chilling like, oh, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love this rendition of Impa because mm-hmm. in the original Nintendo games release order, in the original mm-hmm. Nintendo games, Impa was like an older lady. She was a maid and stuff like that. And then Ocarina, she kind of mm-hmm. became the warrior. Yeah. And then it's been, it's her interpretation has moved around a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in Breath of the Wild, Impa is the older lady, but I'm pretty sure she was a warrior. She's got that like oh, yeah. vibe to her where you're like, man, She's, you kicked butt. You're like you've been through, years ago. You've been through some stuff. And yeah, we can tell. <laughs> yeah, she's cool. She's super mm-hmm. cool. And actually, I think most people probably accidentally enter Kekariko Village from mm-hmm. above. Mm-hmm. I guess you could say farthest away from Impa's house. Okay, I think a lot yeah. of people take that road from oh, yeah. uh, from the horse stable in and it brings you in from the top which can mm-hmm. be a little disorienting at first you can come mm-hmm. in and you look down and you're like what and you're going down a kind of a steep hill of yeah. that road yeah i think that's how i entered it honestly mm-hmm. yeah and then it's just it i <laughs> me with my little 
just jumping down into everything. I just like zoomed right over. I was just like, oh, she has like this really cool house and the there's people who really respect her all around her. And like yeah. she has this, it brings this energy to the town. I, I really like it. Now this is an example too, where this does feel like a living, breathing town for sure. Mm-hmm. Hedno Village also excels in that way, but, but this is the most lived in Kakariko Village, in my opinion. It's, yes. you really feel like, you feel like your home. It's not your home, but you feel like your home. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're sh- you're at other people's homes. There's mm-hmm. gardens that are built. There's people going about their way. Um, mm-hmm. there, uh, I think it has the most attention to detail with, uh, obviously one of them is a shrine quest, but like mm-hmm. uh, characters having schedules in the day and going yeah. to certain places and doing certain things. The schedules, there's mm-hmm. all the different shops, clothing shops, food shops. Uh, you got the little... Um, goddess area to pray to if you don't want to go all the way to you know and they do a nice job Mm -hmm. of still if you dig in you know you could take the little road the hill road on the side but if you do Mm -hmm. dig into the buildings you do get i just realized you do still get a little bit of this like multi-leveled kakariko exploration staple that Mm -hmm. happens in a lot of the other kakariko villages it does you can explore and find all these little nooks and crannies and things i think it's one of the things that i really like is in the ocarina of time kakariko village Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a village and yeah, you're moving around and you're going up and down and but but it's kind of like when you look at it you're kind of like is this how a village functions? Is this really a functioning village? And in the Breath sure. of the Wild one, you're like, yes, you're mm-hmm. still exploring and you're finding nooks and crannies and verticals and jumping on roofs, but you're like this <laughs> feels like a real everything's motivated. I guess is mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah, and I, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, you there's also a, a cuckoo quest there, there too, is. right? Yeah. A good one too. Yeah, <laughs> so that's always fun to me when you have the little quest and everyone has like their little the scheduling part. Like everyone has like their set schedule it reminds me a lot of Majora's Mask. Yes, which I love that because I love Majora's Mask as one of the games I've played a lot of. Mm-hmm. So it's like I I definitely dig this Kakariko village for sure. <laughs> yeah, I liked it too. There's an, uh, also some emotional storylines with the kids crying about their mom who was basically murdered by oh, right. I think uh, the Yiga clan. Damn Yiga clan. <laughs> We're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> Oof, there's a lot of emotional things happening in that town. The Yiga. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, lots of quests start there. I think it's like a total of too many. <laughs> a total of too many. Is that what you oh, have in your notes there? Perfect. So like eight side quests and like four main quests. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah, so there's a lot to do, which is great. I like I like sticking around in village and seeing what I can. Who can I help? <laughs> what can it I do next be, to help you? <laughs> if it's if you're doing kind of the path that Nintendo clearly wants you to do in the mm-hmm. beginning, at least I think it's the first time you have an opportunity to like buy clothes and stuff like yeah. that. You're starting to learn all those mechanics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually bought. <laughs> You know, I saved up stuff and bought stuffs because yeah. I, like, I like purchasing stuff in this game. <laughs> like the different outfits. <laughs> and then, do, do, do. oh, the fairy fountain, which is always yes. fun. I like that that's right, right. You just go up that path and it's like right there. I was, <laughs> and also the fairy, uh, fairy lady is <laughs> huge. I was like, so, you know, I'm playing the game again. <laughs> I was just like the different, what do you call them? The great fairies? The great fairies. Yeah, yeah. The different great fairies, like, vary. But this one, they kind of made her so, like, whim- like voluptuous and, like, whoa. <laughs> I know. I know. It almost feels like she's some kind of weird mix of all the fairies to this point. Yeah. You know, there's a little oh, bit yeah. of the Ocarina fairy in her. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit. Of, maybe not the... Um, Minish Cap Great Fairies. The Minish mm-hmm. Cap Great Fairies are like statues almost. They're just oh. like, oh, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe that's Wind Waker. But anyway, <laughs> the Great Fairies go through a whole journey of, of like do. them being like outspoken to them being more godlike. Mm-hmm. Um, they're fun. Okay. <laughs> Dan, who's been on this show before, who we mm-hmm. used to work with, um, he said every time he goes to a Great Fairy in Breath of the Wild, he feels like just saying like, hey, girl. <laughs> How's yes. it going? You get that that energy. Like she, she's about to lay it down. Like I'm going to talk to you. It's I, I like it. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Like come over here, sugar. Like I got you. <laughs> is, there, is there a graveyard in this Kakariko village? I don't think so. There's a grave site, which is mm-hmm. that mom. Right. The stones, but I don't think there's like a spooky graveyard. No, not like an old green. No. Or mm-hmm. to- does Twilight Princess have a graveyard? I mean, not. No. Not that I could recall. Wow, I guess that's more of an ocarina thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, fair ocarina enough. Ocarina likes the graves. <laughs> We're learning. Um, yeah. Um, interesting. I have an honorable mention. Kakariko Village technically shows up in Hyrule Warriors. But, okay, cool. But everything shows up in Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> 
you know. <laughs> Another one I need to play. <laughs> it's fine. It's it's, it's fun fine. in a Mario Kart way. Okay, okay, I you get know, you. It's I I enjoy. Here, let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. I bought Hyrule Warriors for seven dollars at a used video game store. I think actually in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> for the Wii U, I'm very happy I spent seven dollars on it. Like that was just the right amount of money to have some fun with it. Okay, you I know, get it. You know, I commend I commend uh, whatever the company is that did it. The people who do Dynasty Warriors, they're mm-hmm. huge Zelda fans. There's a lot of fan service. They did a nice job with it, but like mm-hmm. play style wise, I'm like, all right, this is good. This is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it is kind of fun seeing all the Zelda characters and things reinterpreted in that other art style. Yeah. So let's see. What else can we say about um, Kakariko Village in in Breath of the Wild? Oh, one thing is we have a completely different aesthetic. Oh, that's true. It's very, it's, it's, you know, uh, in Breath of the Wild, there's this really nice kind of blurring of, I guess, cultures, you could say. Yeah. It started in Twilight Princess, in my opinion, where in mm-hmm. Ordon Village, there was the kind of the Eastern inspired clinking. I think they're like little prayer tags that go up on oh, the ropes yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I have seen that in certain like Eastern cultures. There was a little bit of like a, they still in Twilight Princess, they kept a little bit of the kind of, um, um, I almost said Eastern, but I guess it's like the, you know, oh, let me call it castle times, <laughs> okay. you know, mid, you know, mid European kind of, um, aesthetic. And I feel that, um, Nintendo's kind of created a Japanese influenced culture that is its own mm-hmm. now for Kakariko village in breath of the wild. You know, I think there mm-hmm. are a lot of like, um, Eastern influences, in the yeah. curves of the house of the the the, oh, yeah. the houses and even the, all the little even the way that they dress actually now I think about it in Kakariko Village it seems to be that way but mm-hmm. but when you also look at like the way the land is plotted you can still feel it feels a little Lord of the Ringsy which is nice oh, yeah. you know yeah definitely <laughs> um, but they definitely zeroed in on on a quote unquote culture like they created their own a little bit yeah for that I town. love it it makes it you know gives it its, its own thing it makes it lively and mm-hmm. I like it. It's kind of fun to kind of explore the well, after you get a Rivali's Grit Gale, mm-hmm. you explore the, the the really tiny tall mountains behind Impa's mm-hmm. house that's shoot oh, way yeah. up. Yeah, you can go up there and kind of poke around a little bit. There's some water and stuff. You can find a couple things. Um it's fun to like parasail off those mm-hmm. tips and go back down into the town. See, I love that. I love I love it when it feels like, oh, if you go this way, you're gonna make it somewhere. You go that way, you're gonna make it somewhere. It's not like a dead end town. There's like a lot going on with it. Yeah, there is. I think there really is. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> not a lot of, oh, I almost said not a lot of dramatic cutscenes, but you actually do get mm-hmm. Impa's story. Yeah. When you, when you get there. Oh yeah. You, and the, the divine beast, um, yeah. cut scene and all that. And the, the memories. All that builds up there. Yep. Love it. <laughs> I like that Impa too. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, Definitely. Cool. Any other standout characters or anything in Cat Creek Village for you? There's the gal, what, Puya? She, the one who has a crush on Link? Oh, yeah. That's, I find that really cute. <laughs> I think that's adorable. Um, I just did the the little girl who wants to play um, hide and seek. Um, oh, yes. What, Kotla? Kot, C-O-T-T-L-A, I think. That's, that's one of the security guard's daughters, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, she's like, you're going to go find me. I think it's cute. I love these little quests that are just so like simple like that. I, I don't know. It's yeah. fun to me. I think it's great. Especially want to spend more time in an area that's like fun like that. <laughs> that is... So a bit like how, you know what, that's really well said. Mm-hmm. I didn't spend too much time in Twilight Princess Kakariko Village, with the mm-hmm. exception of the first initial ex- exploration. Then right. you're kind of just in and out because there's not a lot to see. Right. You know, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot to see, but there's not a lot to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember spending hours in Kakariko Village in Ocarina of Time, as I've already said in this episode. Mm-hmm. And I think I've also spent hours in the Kakariko Village uh, in Breath of the Wild. It's a place where you can just hang out and keep learning people's lives. Yeah, I've been there a lot. Like I said, I haven't gotten far. I haven't even done any of the Divine Beasts yet. So I'm oh, just, wow. yeah, like. But you've done it before, mm-hmm. right? I got, I think I did two of the Divine Beasts before. So I'm, yeah. I, for some reason now I'm struggling. <laughs> you just got to get uh, back in that flow. Yeah, I got to get back in that flow. I just need to get, you know, play a little here at least once a day play. You know, if I take a week off, then it's kind of like, oh, <laughs> what, 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 what am I doing again? You know, you get the a little thing lost. That happens to me is if I don't play for a while, I will always mm-hmm. pull up. Like the arrows, or I pull up the shield when I want to pull up the swords. I put, I forget which direction to push for sh- See, swords and which direction for shields. I always like for some reason invert yes, it. Yes, this is a big problem with me because I, I also I, I play first person shooter games on my PlayStation. Yeah, and the controls on the the, the Switch and the PlayStation are. <laughs> 
just like reversed and it's like <laughs> i'm i'm dying <laughs> i see <laughs> gotta get back into it <laughs> i see well anyway that's uh i think that's our episode on cat creek village yeah any did we find any any tr- you know what's one thing i think i've learned through this episode is i figured we would see that cat creek village is interpreted with many similarities from game to game to game mm. but i think what we learned today is actually that may not be the case no, I think there's similarities between some, but not all. The closest is that it's a place you go back to a few times mm-hmm. in the game, at least. Every yeah. Kekariko village, you at least, it's not a hub, but it is a little bit of a home base. I think yeah, that's the closest. Yeah, you go back to it at least a couple times, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's at least something in common with all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you think Kekariko village will be around in the sequel to Breath of the Wild? Do you think it'll be demolished? Oh no! I hope not. I don't. I, know. Want, I don't want it to be demolished. I, know. I love the little town. I'm. I'm looking forward to see what changes. I'm definitely am. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the next game. Yeah. Um. And You're getting then, close. Yeah. I'm It'll hoping. It'll probably get pushed back to that new switch next year. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to use it to sell the new system. That makes perfect sense. Makes sense. But that's fine. It's fine. It gives me time to finish. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it gives me time to finish Breath of the Wild first part. So. And I think the way they're going to plan it is that Breath of the, the sequel to Breath of the Wild can still be played on a, I guess, a, a version one Switch, even though there's technically there was that version and a half one that came out. Um, right. But I think they're going to release it mm-hmm. when that new one comes out to help boost the sales. But anyway, mm-hmm. IG Anuma said that this definitely is a sequel to Breath of the Wild because he's, he didn't want to leave that land as a game developer. He said, we built this big Hyrule. Yeah. He said, I still want to have more adventures in there. That's, yeah. And so they're going to so add a much. few things. I'm sure there's going to be some underground stuff because we guessed that mm-hmm. from the trailer. Yeah, that's true. But um, oh, that's. But exciting. I do hope Kakariko Village stays intact. I do too, because it's it's where Impa is, and I'm a big Impa fan right now. <laughs> I am as well. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, Alyssa, thank you so much for joining me. Is there any um, social social shout outs you want to put out there? I know you're on Instagram a bit, but if you yeah. don't want to share, that's fine. <laughs> No, yeah, I just always forget what the name exactly is because I have like different variations of my name. <laughs> sure. So on Instagram, you can find me at Zelda Girl Ninety. <laughs> Zelda Girl Ninety. Ah, mm-hmm. yeah, and then like Twitter, isn't it like Alyssa Cat or something? There's all uh, over the place. Yeah, I'm all over the place. Mm-hmm. There's like different different platforms. It's like the Zelda Girl, the Zelda Girl Ninety. Like, okay, <laughs> but Instagram <laughs> Zelda Girl Ninety. Zelda Girl Ninety. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, I'm Raptor Paint on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. You can find the show Another Zelda Pod on Twitter. Another Zelda Podcast on Instagram. Instagram allows a few extra characters there, Alyssa. They let you actually spell it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you can find us on YouTube and oh, hey, we're on Spotify now. Oh, nice. Finally. Yes. Finally got accepted to Spotify. I found out that I was writing some of my um, my uh, my uh, embed, not embed, my encode tags incorrectly and oh. Spotify didn't like it. Okay. Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts were fine with it, but Spotify didn't like it. So I've learned how to fix my code because I write this XML by hand, actually. It's a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> and um, we're now, you can find us by searching another Zelda podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or I think it's technically called Google Podcasts now. They spun that out to its own thing. It used to be Google Play. Oh, right. And all of that you can find on our website. We have links to all of those places where you can listen to us, including YouTube, on our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com. People can find a bunch of our blog posts that we do, um, access to our Patreon page where we have a lot of bonus episodes. Right now, Celeste is recording a bonus episode for us uh, about the Song of Storms. Yay! Which is, oh yeah, we talked about Song of Storms in this episode a little Mm -hmm. bit. And Mm -hmm. that'll be great. I can't wait to hear it. She's recording it now, but I trust her. I know it's going to be a great episode. That'll be on our Patreon page, nice. which you can find from our website or go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. Alyssa, mm-hmm. I'll see you in two episodes, but <laughs> yes. actually we're going to take a quick dinner break here and actually record <laughs> that episode a little behind the curtain. Yes, we are. And uh, I can't wait. That's mm-hmm. going to be the next episode is uh, Ryan and Mallory. They're going to be talking about the different ways that each of them played Breath of the Wild. Oh, nice. I'm very cleverly titling that episode Breath of the Wilds. <laughs> We'll compare and contrast Bravo. how each person approached the show. <laughs> and then after that, it'll be you and I talking about mm-hmm. top 10 most bothersome enemies. I have a great list. I'm so excited to talk about my list in that episode. <laughs> I mean, this, we haven't had a good good little top 10 list in a while. I'm excited. I'm ready. We're back in the saddle. This show's moving. I'm so, I'm so ready. Okay, Alyssa, thank you. No problem. I'll see you in a month. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs>